Hi guys! I'm here to talk to you about repetitive strain injury today and how it can affect crafters. I have a very active puppy in the background, he's chewing all the things and he's barking at all the things and I'm sure he's going to pipe up at some point but if you're wondering what the chewing noises in the background are, it's him and he says hi. <laughs> okay, so repetitive strain injury, what is it and why should we worry about it? When you're using your hands a lot, as most of us are, especially if we're crafters, you can wear the muscles or the tendons or the ligaments or the structures that are in your hands and your wrists and your arms. I, on a typical day, will get up early in the morning, I'll do eight plus hours of work on my computer, and then any spare time that I have will be spent using my hands, either knitting or crocheting or spinning or needlework, anything like that. A lot of people spend their spare time on their phones, this kind of motion, that's also repetitive. And these repetitive motions, where you do the same thing over and over and over again using the same muscles and the same tendons and the same ligaments, eventually start to cause damage. Your body's obviously designed to take a certain amount of wear and tear, and it has processes that will heal you. But if you do the same thing over and over again in a really focused way for a very long amount of time, you start to cause more damage than your body can fix before you start doing that thing the next time. And I know that you all know what I'm talking about, so when you have a netting project and you really want to get it done, maybe there's a deadline or you just really want to have your hat on or something, or maybe you're working on a cross stitch where, oh, just one more colour, just one more page, you know, um, and you just keep on going. It can eventually cause a real problem, so you can actually cause yourself so much damage that you won't be able to use your hands and wrists and arms again, which could put an end to your crafting career. Something we want to avoid. There are loads of symptoms, I'm not going to list them all because there are so many, but there are five that you should really look out for. If you start to notice any of these, then keep an eye on them because it can, it can be an indication that you have an RSI and you need to take steps to stop it from getting any worse. So the first one is pain. Um, this can be sharp pain, it can be dull pain, it, it's localised to the area. So obviously if you are knitting a lot and you're worried that you have an RSI and you have pain in your foot, it's not related. <laughs> I tend to get the pain from knitting specifically in my arm down here and in my, um, I don't know, this kind of back area of my hand. If I'm doing too much needlework, I tend to get pain up here obviously from gripping my needle to, to, you know, this is a very cramped, cramped way to hold your hand. So obviously from doing that too much. You can also get swelling, stiffness or weakness. So I tend to notice that my grip strength goes. If I'm wearing rings, I find it difficult to get them off and my hands can feel quite stiff. So, you know, if you, if you go for a walk and then the next day you think, oh, I haven't used those muscles for a while, my legs are kind of stiff and that's the kind of stiffness that I'm talking about. You can also get tingling or numbness, maybe the tips of your fingers, you can't feel them properly or you start to get pins and needles in them. Uh, you can get sensitivity to temper changes, for example when you walk outside and you suddenly think, oh, actually my hands are feeling the cold a lot more than they would have done before. And that's such an ambiguous thing to say, but I kind of assume that you know what feeling the cold means. Like, you know, you kind of notice when you when you go through a temperature change, but if you suddenly feel sensitive to that and it's it's like an unpleasant thing, um, that's that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. And then the final thing is cramp or throbbing. So if you suddenly realise that you have a throbbing going on in your forearm or your hand feels like it's cramped in this position because you've been holding your needle too tight, um, that's that's another symptom. In the in the beginning, you you may not notice them at all or a little. So. If, for example, I always notice, I'm quite sensitive to it because I obviously know that it's a problem for me. I'll notice that if I am stitching and I stop stitching and I go to turn the kettle on, then doing this, so opening my hand from holding the needle, is suddenly actually a little bit painful and it feels a bit uncomfortable. Um, and then it goes away very quickly. The longer it goes on, the more painful it gets and the longer it takes for the pain to go away. So say I do this and, and 30 seconds later the pain is gone in the initial stages. Um, if I ignore it and just keep going then it could get to 
10 minutes and the pain is still there. And I don't mean in one session, so say I'm talking about an hour and then the pain's a little bit and then I, and it takes 30 seconds to dissipate and then I do another hour and then suddenly the pain takes 10 minutes to dissipate. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about over an extended period of time. So like on day one maybe it takes 30 seconds to dissipate and then two weeks later I'm still stitching a lot and it's suddenly 10 minutes. So that's the kind of time scale that we're talking about. Um, gradually it gets worse, so eventually this motion will become so painful that I actually won't want to stitch anymore. How do you actually treat it? So the first thing that you do is you stop doing what you're doing. So if I'm knitting a lot and I suddenly notice that I'm getting knitting related pains, I know that I have to stop knitting. Luckily I do so many crafts that it isn't too much of a problem because I can just cross stitch for a week or whatever and it doesn't matter that I'm not knitting. Um, but if you are doing only one craft then just don't do it, whether it's for a day or more. As soon as you notice it, if you take a rest of a day you will, no you will notice that things are immediately better. If you still have pain after a day you've probably got a little bit worse of an injury than you think and you should rest for longer than a day. The last time I talked about this I wrote about it on my blog and I rested for a week and a few days I think before I felt comfortable knitting again. It's it's quite tough giving it up because it's something that if you've managed to give yourself a repetitive strain injury doing it then obviously you are doing it a lot and you're really dedicated to it and you really love doing it. So it is difficult to stop but the way that I justify it to myself is I just say you know if I don't stop then what will happen next? You know will I suddenly end up with no motion in my hands at all and have to stop forever? And that's not something I want to do so that's a way to kind of think about it if you're finding it really tough. I don't know what that floaty thing was. That was cool. Okay, so we've got the stop. You can also take medications. So an anti-inflammatory, for example, ibuprofen or aspirin, and that will just reduce the discomfort slightly. Um, obviously, it's not a long-term solution, so the rest is really the first thing I would recommend. But if it is unbearable, then take some take some meds. That that's okay. You know, you don't have to sit there in pain. <laughs> if you have a symptom of an RSI for more than three weeks, I would recommend going to see your doctor. I am quite good at recognising what it is now because I do tend to get bouts of it fairly regularly. Um, so I don't head over to the doctor every single time, but if you aren't sure and you've had the symptoms for a long time, I would go see the doctor because they may have more advice than I can give you. Um, and it may not be an RSI, it may be something else, so, you know, get it checked out. Pain for more than three weeks, or a symptom that I, of the, or a symptom of the type that I've been talking about for more than three weeks is a problem, so go to your doctor. <laughs> Medical advice with Cory. Once things get more serious, and once you've seen your doctor, uh, methods of treatment that can be taken include steroid injections, I don't know what steroids do, but they can help, um, or you can actually have an operation. You can eventually have to have an operation. It does get that bad. So carpal tunnel syndrome has other causes, but one of the one of the things that um, causes carpal tunnel syndrome is repetitive motion. So, you know, it, it's not it's not a small thing that we're talking about here. If you take a rest and you feel better and decide that you can get back to it, then don't get straight back into hardcore crafting. Okay. If I've been knitting for six hours a day and I notice that I have pain and I take a rest day and then everything's fine and then I do another six hour day of knitting, I'm an idiot. Um, that's, you know, you've got to you've got to give your body time to heal. It doesn't all just happen. You have to give whatever, whatever fixes whatever's going on time. It's the same with any injury. You wouldn't break your leg and then the next day start walking on it again. I'm not saying this is as serious as a broken leg, but you get the gist. While you are resting, you can do a few things that will just help you with the discomfort. So I've already talked about the aspirin or the anti-inflammatories medication. The other thing that you can do is splint the area. This is not something that you should jump straight to and leave your affected limb in a splint for a long time because actually what helps the healing process is blood flowing around your body. and one of the ways that blood gets around your body apart from your heart pumping is motion. So if I'm doing this with my hands or I'm using my hands, I'm making a cup of tea or whatever, 
the motion of my hands is helping the blood to get around them and that's therefore promoting healing. If I splint my hand so that it's like this all the time, there's less motion so the only thing that's moving the blood around my body is my heartbeat and it's a slower process and things will heal slower. I do have a splint because sometimes it can get painful enough that you want to keep, keep the area still because moving it can make whatever symptom you're experiencing worse. I have a neoprene splint which I, I just bought in my local pharmacy and it's it just looks like this and it just holds holds the limb um, still. It's a bit of an effort to do this um, and it's a bit uncomfortable to use the hand while it's in the splint. There's the floaty fibre thing again! What is going on? I haven't done it very tight but it holds the limb still and the pain is reduced. Um, I sometimes sleep with it on just because I find that I tend to lie on my wrists. I know that's weird but then I wake up in the morning and it's painful because they've been in a funny position and then if I already have pain because of the RSI um, it's not great so I will sometimes use a splint to sleep in um, I haven't had to do that recently because I'm managing quite well to notice my limits <laughs> it does it does ease pain if it's almost unbearable so I can recommend that if you are having such big problems okay ice is the next thing so you know when um, you see athletes doing big sporting events and then afterwards they go and sit in a bucket of ice. I don't know what the exact biomechanism is that makes the ice help but it does help and I know it helps because I use it myself. So the method that I use I found on Ravelry.com which is a knitting social network and the information came from Joshua Tucker. There's a link to his post in the box below. And the method is outlined. So you freeze several two litre bottles um, with water in them, so you make massive things of ice basically. Um, and then you fill a receptacle with water and you put your frozen bottles inside it. So I use a big basin, you can use your kitchen sink, um, a bathroom basin if you've got the small little ones that you can't get your whole arm into or your whole forearm into. Um, it's probably too small so try something a little bit bigger and you put the frozen bottles into the water. Over several hours you dip the affected area into the ice bath for five to ten seconds. This can actually be quite painful. Sticking a limb into something that's really cold can be can be can be sore. Um, and then over the course of two hours do this at least ten times. So that's five times an hour dipping the affected limb into an ice bath for five to ten seconds. If you do this for at least seven days, it can help so, so much. You've got your frozen bottles, you stick them into water and you let the water get cold and then five times an hour for two hours for seven days, you dip your limb into it. And the way that this works is, I talked about the blood going around your body before. What you do by sticking a limb into something really, really cold is you cause everything to contract. And then once you take it out, everything expands again and that forces all of the fluids that are in your muscles and your fibres to get to get going again. Um, and by doing it repeatedly over that time just causes a lot more flow than if you were just sitting there doing your normal thing. Um, it, does, it does work. It's a bit of a faff, but, um, you know, really it's it's sometimes the only thing I've found that makes me feel really much better. You can also buy a spray that keeps the affected area cool and the coolness just um, reduces the inflammation so it, it's, a, it's a good symptom reliever. Yoga also helps. So one of the problems that also affects an RSI is the fact that when you're crafting and I know that we all do this, I, know, I, I don't know a single person who has excellent posture you hang your neck off your, you hang your head off your neck, so you sit there like this, I'll sit there, I'll normally have my bent back, I've got my posture very straight in this video, but I'll, I'll sit like with a, with a curved spine with my head hanging off my neck and there's a lot of strain that goes onto my shoulders, down my arms and into my hands and wrists as a result of that. Um, so yoga can help because you strengthen your core muscles and your, your posture improves and no, I don't do yoga because I hate it, but do what I say, not what I do. 
<laughs> and I was recommended that by an osteopath, so somebody who deals with this kind of thing all day every day. You can also get a lumbar support for whichever chair you're sitting in. So this is one of those things that you just put on the back of your chair and it it should follow the curve of your spine so that the small of your back is supported because that's why we all tend to have such bad posture where we lean over into our computers like this. I know that was so attractive. Um, it just forces you to sit more straight and more upright um, and therefore just helps you with the whole postural spinal correctness bit and that will put less strain on the muscles which means that more of your which means that all of your energy will go into your knitting and not all of your energy going into your knitting plus some to maintain poor posture I hope that makes sense there are also um, several stretches that you can do and these were published by interweave crochet and I was recommended them by Linda of the kettle yarn company and I'm going to put links to all of those plus the pictures below because I don't want to give you a demonstration right now because that would involve me rearranging everything so I can show you a table. It will make more sense if you have a look at the link so that's all done in the description box below. I have to say the thing that I find the most helpful is rest. If I notice that things are hurting a little bit then I just stop doing whatever craft it was that I'm doing and give it a day and then I get back to it and I make sure I don't go overboard and everything's fine. I don't think this is something that is life-threatening, it's not a huge desperate medical problem, but it does affect people and it does cause discomfort in your crafting and if you can avoid it then why, why not, you know? Um, so I hope you found this really helpful, I have found it so difficult to record, um, you have no idea how many times I've actually recorded it, <laughs> it feels very strange giving sort of technical information. And I hope that it is helpful and if you have any suggestions at all or you have any corrections to make then please let me know. I don't want to give out any wrong information. I did get this checked by a doctor so hopefully, fingers crossed, it is all good information but I'm very open to suggestions, um, any more strategies for coping with it. If you have had an RSI and have got a different way of dealing with it than I do then please let me know and maybe I'll do a follow up video. If not, the blog has got all the links in it and I'll make sure that they're all in the description box below. And I'm starting to trip over my tongue. Things here are going crazy. The dog is mad. Phone's ringing. I think this is a really good place to end this video. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye. I'm just about to put my arm into an ice bath as I discussed in um, this video. So I thought I would video the process for you. So here goes. I've just got to turn my camera around. This is my ice bath, it's, these are ice packs which come from Gusto, which is a kind of pre-packaged meal thing that my parents order, and it's been sitting in this water for probably about three hours, and so the water is really cold, and now the idea is that over the next two hours I submerge my arm in here for five to ten seconds, um, ten times, so five times an hour. Let's see if I can juggle my hands. <laughs> so it's my right arm that's the problem. So I just, it's a bit difficult to demonstrate, but I'm just gonna leave it in there, up to the elbow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and out again. It's really, really cold. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to do that again in about 15 minutes. I won't record the whole thing, but just so you can see. All right, bye. Do a video that I've been really putting off for a... Do you mind? <laughs> because this is important. The dog's getting involved now. Hello. Do you want to say hi to everyone? And you should rest. It would help if I could remember how to use this thing. <laughs>